करके Well, Walter. Yes. Walter Zoy is with YMF, the Young Musicians Foundation, which is how we met. Yep. And it's become this slight obsession for me, the work that you do. But you and me both. <laughs> it's obsessive. It's yeah. the best. And I can't wait for everybody to hear about it. But what's the YMF Young Musician Foundation dot org? Yeah. Uh, tell us about it. Young Musicians Foundation, um, our primary our primary reason for being is to bring access to music and arts education to folks who normally wouldn't have that access. And one step below that, music education is fantastic. Any experience you have with trying to learn or play an instrument um, is a great and possibly transcendent experience. Anything from you know a five-year-old to a, I was going to say 500-year-old, but um, that kind of would relate be. to the discussion we were having earlier. <laughs> the ghost one. <laughs> yeah, the beings, yeah. Um, but it's, it's more about bringing the benefits of music and arts education. Just like sports, just like anything. That's most, what we talked about. That's so right. You and I, one of the things we talked about with music that we connected on, and I told you, I am addicted to sporting events. Mm -hmm. like I love going live for one reason, American Anthem. Everybody stands up. <laughs> there's like this music moment i mm -hmm. get teary-eyed every single time it doesn't matter who's singing unless it's roseanne Barr. <laughs> but otherwise well, it's like this very moving moment where there's sixty thousand people and we're all in the moment we're feeling the move music and that's a transcendental moment of music yeah you know so when you talk about those who don't have access to it it really you know you're starting with the youth yeah Right, and oh, yeah. getting these, what's phenomenal is uh, currently you're in South Central LA or mm -hmm. South LA, yeah, so. which many zip codes are underprivileged. Schools are squoze, some of the funds are taken out of there, oh, you yeah. know, and you've got kids that don't have a lot of insight into anything other than that day to day block. Well, we're at 27 different schools across greater Los Angeles. And uh, our primary program model is we send teaching artists out to each school and to each classroom. Uh, and we work with about 5,000 kids on a weekly basis. That's incredible. How many teachers? We have, uh, all, we just hired one. I think we're at 22 now. Wow. 22 teachers go That's out. That's so yeah. impressive. And yeah, and by taking the education, by having the teachers go out to the school and during the school day, it makes it as accessible as we possibly can, because there are issues like transportation that folks have after school, families work, um, families don't have access to transport to a music lesson or something like that, let alone being able to pay for a music lesson. And if, um, oftentimes a school will have instruments because they used to fund music quite a bit. Um, I had the ukulele and the clarinet. Nice, nice that you have ukulele. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's actually one of our more popular instruments now. It's, I, I should take your class. <laughs> <laughs> but if the, um, if the student does not have an instrument or the school doesn't have an instrument, we provide that. And what type of instruments do you go in with? Like you're walking into a school for the first time, they have no instruments. Well, we usually survey the school beforehand, and we even survey the kids as to what it is that they want to learn. Um, we try to be as culturally responsive as we can, so that we're not coming in and dictating to a school, you know, what you're, you're going to learn. You're not taking kazoos? Those? No one ever asks for kazoos. We had kazoos, too. It just popped in my head. Strangely. Maybe... Everyone should have one. Maybe they don't know about <laughs> kazoos. Um, I'm going to take a note. Please. Kazoos. How do you spell it? Uh, Kazooie, Z-O-O-I. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, <laughs> yeah. First day of school. First day of school. So we offer orchestral strings and brass and woodwinds. We also offer guitar, percussion, voice, uh, ukulele, and music technology. So when I first came aboard YMF, well, the program was very small, and we were actually, it was a different organization then. Um, but I watched it sort of transform over the last three or four years where I think our most popular instrument would have been either a keyboard or violin about three, four years ago. Now, hands down, it's music technology. 
Right. It's music technology. And if any school, most schools, almost all schools, have a computer lab of some sort. And if they've got a computer lab, we can come in and we can load it with the software and the interfaces and the hardware that they require so that we can teach anything from third graders up to um, high school seniors how to make music in the computer. How do we make sure that playing instruments doesn't die? Like what you said is very interesting. That's a great question. Right, like how are we going to ensure that the saxophone doesn't I, become a dying I don't know that we occupation? can. Really, you think we'll go electronic? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the culture goes where the culture wants to go. I mean, the, we don't play the lute anymore. We don't... Um, What's the lute? The lute? Uh, it's a, uh, a medieval instrument. It's like the great-grandfather or grandmother of the guitar. Um, oh, Big Got bowl you. back. Uh, before that, it was the oud. You play the lute, don't you? The oud. The oud? Oud. Oh, you, you do. play it? Mm -hmm. I knew you did. Not well. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find them. <laughs> but it's fun. Um, and so those inst instruments still exist. There'll, there'll always be saxophone players and violinists, but the, the culture moves on. And so it's not really our job to put um, the current culture under a, a museum glass and say, there it is. It's our job to respond to what the communities that we serve want and and to work with that and, and to reflect back their voices and to reflect back what's important to them. Um, if in the process they pick up the violin and want to stick with that, that's amazing. That That right. is amazing. Um, but if they're lit up about you know making beats on the computer and using samples of violins, they're still being creative. They're still dealing with um, the creative musical process, they're making aesthetic choices in terms of the voices that they use, and sure. it's still the same structure. How often do you hit that same school? Like, is it a weekly program? Weekly. You stay with it for All years? We stay with, a, we won't make an agreement with a school unless they commit to a, at least a year with us. Have you had schools for three years now? Oh, yeah. And what are, do you have students that have stuck with it and mm -hmm. they're finding success? Academic success, uh, social emotional success. Yes, I'm not talking about academic success. That music success, that passion, or that, you know, they're finding healing there, and they're coming to the program, and they're. It's that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, and we we measure success um, in two ways. One is by musical skill acquisition, but just as important is social emotional skill acquisition, and we actually interweave social emotional. Um, principles and, and pillars actually into each and every music lesson so that we can assess for that. So that at the same time that they're picking up a musical skill, we can relate it to a social emotional skill and see where they're at at the beginning of the semester and then see where they're at at the end of the semester and we can assess, uh, assess for uh, progression. You know, that's the, that's the most important part of what you're doing, I think. And it gets lost in the name, right? Mm -hmm. Young Musician Foundation. But underneath it all, there are these teachers. There's, you know, you just talked about the social, emotional learning. And then there's the Florence Mills building, mm -hmm. which is something I've been lucky enough to go to. Um, but you should talk about who Florence Mills is and why that became such a historic person to name this building after. And then all the beautiful things. I think it was the Hollywood Housing yes. Project. Yes. Is that what they were called? Hollywood right. Housing, yeah. Uh, Hollywood Community Housing Corporation. They're a nonprofit. Yes, they and were amazing. Amazing. Oh my God, what a great organization. It's such a privilege to partner with them. Over the course of the pandemic, actually, through um, one of our board members, she made the introduction uh, to HCHC, Hollywood Community Housing Corporation. And they build um, affordable and adaptive and supportive housing all across Los Angeles. They've done 31 different uh, projects. And it's, I suppose it still is their most recent, is the Florence Mills Apartments. And they offered us um, essentially the ground floor of this brand new, gorgeous, um, affordable housing complex right there at the heart of historic South Central. Um, and, and this complex took homeless people off the street. Correct. Veterans were at the grand opening. Correct. They spoke about how this was life changing. The woman that spoke mm -hmm. was, I think of her often. Yeah. You know, really amazing. The, the work that they do is talk about transformative. Mm -hmm. And so together, Sarah, who is the uh, executive director, uh, and I, 
as we were discussing it, we, I, we came upon actually what I think is like a new program model, to, in a hmm. sense. I mean, they could have had anything in that sort of, it was, it was meant to be a retail space when they first built right. the building. They so there's have, the building, and yeah. then there's this open space underneath it that's just like this beautiful open space. Open it's space. just one big room, and that's where Walter comes in. That's where Walter comes in, and so we will be providing tuition-free music classes and media arts classes to the residents directly above us, and they also have a... Um, a housing complex across the street, uh, the Paul Williams, named for the famed uh, Los Angeles architect, and will be also uh, providing music uh, and media arts classes to their residents, all ages. We're working with um, our usual, 90% uh, of the folks we work with are pre-K through high school senior. Uh, we work with adults with Homeboy Industries, formerly incarcerated, uh, formerly gang-involved folks. Um, and we'll have uh, classes for adults there, but what I'm really excited about is the, um, th we really have a great opportunity to do intergenerational music programming. Yes. So like families all together learning music at the same time. Um, and that, talk about reinforcing not only the familial bonds and the familial connections, but it builds out the community. And so we are guests in the community that we serve, but anything that we can do to um, bring folks together connect to self, connect to others, connect to the greater community. Um, that's what's that's so beautiful about yeah. it. And when, you know, we went to the grand opening, you know, I was fortunate enough to see it through many phases. You know, when you first got there and then the grand opening, then the sketches. And what I loved the most about that day was the different socioeconomic classes that were there. Mm -hmm. And the power that it felt like everybody was equal. We, you know, it's just, it was a beautifully done, thought through, mm. amazing place to watch people get homes that haven't had homes. Yeah, they, the design of the building is incredible. The reward was just watching that happen. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll be shortly actually building out the space downstairs. Um, we're into a, a building fund actually and our vision is, and we've, our architect has um, helped us realize that vision on paper, um, a really robust state-of-the-art media arts lab, a uh, video and music control room, five classrooms, as well as a large sort of flex open space that can have larger classes, ensembles, concerts, workshops. All of it will be free of charge to the community. And um, we need help. We need some help to build these out. Um, we really do want to offer the most cutting edge equipment um, access well, to that. We've got some cutting edge people on the board. Yes. Myself included. But not me. It's the the talent. Like I yeah. went to a lunch with Walter. I was like, oh, snap. We <laughs> are in the presence of greats. Like folks that have really yeah. bands that you know, producing things that you see today, offering their time yeah. to these children and, and, and adults yeah. but you know it's powerful it, it's it's a big effort and it's bringing in big talent and it's just getting started it's just getting started yeah, yeah. just kind of watching the trajectory of our programs and what the interests are um, again now saying that our music technology programs are the most popular programs that we offer to the schools we always want to take that a step further we don't want to have uh, anything that we offer be a sort of an isolated experience. If we're gonna to go to a classroom, it's gonna be for the entire school year. And hopefully for many school years thereafter. And fortunately, um, when a school takes us on, we've never lost a school. Um, right. We lost uh, one program due to the pandemic, but um, they, they wanna stay with it because they see the difference in their students. Um, and the same thing with music technology. So the, the, the next level is, is in terms of providing access. Uh, we want to provide access to employment opportunities. We want to provide access for doing our part. All of it. Yeah, for folks who wouldn't have the, the opportunity to, I mean. Level in the playing field. Yeah. Just level in the playing field. It's the right thing to do. And you know, because these schools do have to cut their music program. Yeah. They cut the things that might you know, spark creativity and imagination and thinking further than that yeah. street corner. Yeah. And those are the types of areas you've, you've gone into, and it is making an impact. 
and you see it. You see it. I mean, every time I've come, I think we cried. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I, I think I do too. I'm stop crying. Oh um, man. How do you? So you're in California. Mm hmm Is there thoughts of other states or branching out, or what does ten years, twenty years from now, look like? So we really, and we're going through a strategic uh, planning process, and um, based on where we're at right now, we see our greatest impact as actually being a, a an incubator and an innovator for literally redefining what music education is and can be. So it's our vision five, ten years from now to not only uh, provide a, uh, a creative space where other professionals can come in or we can bring in professionals from universities and um, and develop innovative new musical curricula because we'll, we have the assessment tools, we have um, a space and so many communities that we it's work with. It's like a with. community music university. Yeah, yeah, but work, yeah, community, exactly. Yeah. And then part two is um, during the pandemic, we did a quick pivot and um, in six weeks, we were able to put up 450 unique asynchronous music lessons. We just empowered all our teachers to do it on their iPhones, and they did it, and it was great. Um, then everybody went to Zoom, so we were back to synchronous, but that gave us an idea. So five years from now, certainly 10 years from now, we'll have our online music academy, OMA, fully developed, and based on the research that we have done to date, there are not, there really aren't any programs that do high quality sequential engaging music lessons That's right. classes for the small ones anything from pre-k through eighth grade and all the instruments will be available and that will be a curriculum that will be open free to everyone crowdsourced if you like the lesson if you like the experience donate what you can if you can't that's fine too but that's that's the vision five ten years from now and the thing that really ties it all together for me and makes me really excited is in our new space, this media lab that we have um, and the workforce development program that we'll have will not only be training folks to go and get jobs in the creative economy, we'll be giving them hands-on experience in developing lesson content for our online music academy. Right. So it's this big circle. They'll get direct real-world experience, build a huge portfolio that they can point any prospective employer to, and we'll be building our capacity in terms of the content that we'll be able to provide. That's how you change the world. Well, in music in our hearts, we'll always be dancing. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine just everybody having their own theme song in their head <laughs> every day? Yeah. Envisioning like butterflies and the little Snow White thing. But that's the kind of world it can be. Yeah. Maybe. And at least it, better than We'll it teach you how to do it uh, with free online software and they can, you know, compose whatever they want right there on how the computer. How do people get involved? Like there's definitely a need for donation. We'll be we're always fundraising. Yes, always fundraising. Um, the first, the first and easiest way to get involved is go to our website ymf like Frank Yellow Mary Frank, Young or Musicians Foundation young musician dot org, foundation. <laughs> dot org, and right there um, on the homepage, sign up to get our newsletter. We have an online newsletter that comes out, and just get to see what it is that we do. Um, course you can make a donation through our, our website as well uh, as we continue to move forward and begin construction on this new facility right now we're working in all the schools but we're sort of stateless right now waiting for the construction to finish in our uh, new facility um, there'll be all sorts of vol uh, opportunities to volunteer um, we envision like a really robust schedule of uh, workshops and classes for the community concerts for the community so um, if you're an artist, let us know who you are and what you do, and um, we'll see what we, can <laughs> what we can program. We really also want to be kind of a, a, a community resource, that it's not just YMF programming, but that we can pr provide a kind of um, forum or platform for artists who are already working in the community or who might be touring or might be you know, coming through Los Angeles and, and want to engage with students want to engage with the community and we can provide that as well.
That's a big one. Can you imagine having little concerts with Steven Tyler in that mm -hmm. space? And then no one else is invited but me. <laughs> I imagine that every day. I'm just kidding. What I like about what you know you say and how you operate this is you the when I said five and ten years and the things you just spoke about, it's really based on the community and the need. Yeah. Like it's flexible enough. There isn't something that says this is what we do, this is all we're gonna do. You land in Florence Mills and found out that there were actually adults living in that building yeah. that were wanting to learn to play an instrument Correct. and we're just as excited about it yeah. and you changed it to where it included the adults absolutely absolutely and that's what type of foundation this is it's really about spreading the joy of music to everybody's ears and everybody's mouth and everybody's fingertips hopefully mm -hmm. Fing especially the mm -hmm. fingertips mm -hmm. um florence mills you asked that question earlier stormy and i'm sorry i didn't get to it i um but Florence Mills was a uh, very popular singer in the 20s and 30s. And that section of Central Avenue where we're located now uh, is really at the heart of what was the Central Avenue jazz scene in the 40s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s, really. Anybody from you know Miles Davis to um, Coleman Hawkins to Charlie Mingus, they all played there. That It was our equivalent to New York City um, and the West 42nd Street scene in New York City. And Florence Mills was actually bi-coastal. Um, and she was popular on Broadway, but she was also popular in the LA jazz scene. Um, and also really a pioneer. I mean, she unfortunately passed away at a very young age. As an African-American young woman, she was not only a solo act, uh, but she was also an activist. And she would hold rallies and she was a social justice activist at a time when you know, it wasn't popular. <laughs> not at it all. wasn't popular for Florence to be doing it either. No. And unfortunately, she passed away uh, at a young age, as I said. And um, one way that uh, Los Angeles honored her is that they actually built a theater uh, called the Florence Mills Theater that had acts and, and was active from, I believe, the early 30s until probably the late mid 60s. Wow. And uh, oh, unfortunately, it went derelict. The building went derelict, um, and the, the neighborhood kind of um, followed. Yeah, the neighborhood kind of followed. And so, when Hollywood Community Corporation came in, the, the building was condemned. And um, so, they took it down and they built this lovely complex and they painted two five story murals of Florence Mills and called it the Florence Mills Apartments to honor the legacy of not only Florence Mills, but the legacy of that neighborhood. And, and so that folks can own their history and understand where it is that they live and be proud of that. And the place that we're building, we want folks when they come in to immediately feel inspired because it's, we got really interesting cutting edge architecture in there, in addition to all the um, technology and, uh, uh, and classrooms and stuff, but also to feel valued. Somebody comes in there, and it's this wonderful, uplifting space that's there for them. And yeah, we, it's not out of pity. No. Right. There's it's out of that. respect mm -hmm. and love. Because yeah. like you were saying, Stormy, I mean, music is what connects us. Words get in the way all the time. And yeah. a lot of times when folks think of music, they think that words are part of music. And, and they are, of course. But music, in its truest sense, there's there are no words. It's it's just consciousness connecting to consciousness, and it transcends everything. Um, when you were saying why you love to go to sporting events and the and the um, national anthem, there have been numerous studies uh, replicated that uh, it's mostly done with choral work, but it, it it's actually been replicated across other ensembles. Did you know that when folks, let's say a group of twenty folks are singing together, um, after five minutes their hearts beat at exactly the same pace. Their hearts are actually connected at the same pace. That makes pace. total sense to me. Yeah. Makes and that's what you're sense. feeling when you go to the, I mean, and that's what people feel when they hear music. And, and they don't, we don't even know it. Mm -mm. No, we don't even we know it. We just know something's happening yeah. and it feels good and we get the chills and it's like we scream at the high note. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I love everything about it. I miss live shows. Mm. I'm going back soon. soon. I went to Garth Brooks. Ah. Yeah. Felt really good. Yeah. So do you take volunteers for we, YMF? Um, we will. Uh, 
at when, as I said, once we start programming at the at the new facility, which we imagine will be January, February at the latest. It's going to be a party. And it'll be a party. Yeah. And we need people to help us plan the parties. We I'm in. <laughs> that would be an amazing party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and where can the uh, people find you online, Instagram, social networks? Yeah, YMF, um, Young Musicians Foundation. Look us up on um, Facebook. Look us up on uh, Instagram. We're getting our Twitter up and running. Um, got some younger folks on the team, so um, we're So they'll know how to do all that? Well, yeah. yeah I know how to do a little bit, but we've got folks. But I'm, I want to get uh, like a TikTok thing going and, and like a music challenge to see how many hearts that we can align to beat at the same time. What a great idea. What a great idea. So everybody's going to volunteer for that. Mm-hmm. Find them, Young Musicians Foundation. It's easy, ymf.org. That, mm -hmm. that would be a great starting point. And from there, you can check out our social channels, sign up for our um, newsletter and other. Um, we don't send out, you won't, be <laughs> you won't be under a tidal wave of spam. We yeah, send out things maybe once your information. a month at, yeah. the, at the most. But um, yeah, if you're at all interested. And send an email, um, send a message through the, the website as well. We read everything, we respond to everything got an idea if you've got a resource or a need i think this is the right organization that will respond to it and you can find walter with a z double o i walter z walter z how do you say it again zoy zoy i got it like soy soy yeah, like soy mm -hmm. totally spelled different um thanks walter thank you stormy this was a great privilege thank you so much my privilege is mine Yay. snappity Thank you.